Denny, this story takes place over several years and happened while I was in late high school early community college. My two best friends lived directly across the street from one another. Mike had been there most of his life. And Rob and his parents moved in directly across the street. We used their street as a headquarters chill spot and would spend most of our days together. It was always us three and then random friends that would come and go as well. Since Rob's house was bigger, the three of us along with anyone else that joined would all gather primarily in his house as it had a large finished basement and it was easier to just be teenagers down there. Rob also used it as his computer room and for band practice. Weird things started to happen that we couldn't t explain. Entire groups of people were experiencing this so I know we weren't t crazy. It bothered some of us. But for the most part we were just curious about it. Being teenagers, we all just instantly classified it as demons of course. Off the top of my head here are some isolated events. One heavy footsteps upstairs in the middle of the night. We went upstairs, grabbed kitchen knives, walked the whole house even upstairs. Both his parents were dead, asleep and didn't t see anything. Upon further inspection, we noticed a sand dollar decoration that Rob's mom had set on the living room coffee table was smashed to pieces, just sitting on the coffee table, as if struck with a hammer. We also inspected the old grandfather clock and noticed the pendulum wasn't t swinging. It usually does. The clock was icy cold to the touch. Two following a party. All of us crashed into the basement. I wanna say, there were at least five people there. We kept hearing this weird 8-bit music coming from an unidentifiable source. No matter where we were looking, the sound seemed to be coming from nowhere and everywhere all at once. None of us were able to identify what the tune melody was. One of our friends got upset and went home. Three another night. Mike saw a shadow figure go into the laundry room it was a room connected to the basement and when. He turned the light on and went in there. Of course there was nothing there. All of us were accounted for so it wasn't t anyone pulling a prank. For I wasn't t there for this one. But Rob and Mike were hanging out alone at Rob's house and claimed that they had to lock themselves in one of the bedrooms upstairs as they felt something chasing stalking them. They heard footsteps rushing up the stairs and then at the door. Five assorted random events. Things being misplaced. Strange sounds at night. These would happen periodically over the years. One night. Rob claims the demon showed itself to him in the basement when he was there alone. It didn't he seem threatening. It was a man wearing a denim jacket. Standing in the hallway propped up against the wall with his arms crossed. It then. Dissipated. Rob said he didn't he feel threatened or scared. And that he felt rather comfortable with this ghost. There was nothing malicious about it. Since we didn't he have a name for it. We decided to just name the ghost Denny because of his denim jacket. We now had a name for it and would refer to this ghost as Denny for the remainder of time. Whenever we d see Rob at school or around town we d ask him if he has seen or heard Denny. I don t actually remember. If he saw the apparition again. But small things would happen here or there. And we d all just chalk it up to Denny and move on with our days. We officially stopped being afraid of it. Strangely. One day. I was hanging out with Mike and his mom across the street at Mike's. Rob wasn't t home so it was just us. Mike's mom had been a local bartender in the area for decades and we were just sharing some Denny stories with her I am pretty sure a Denny. Event happened the day prior so we were just giving her a recap of what we d experienced. Keep in mind. We had not mentioned the name Denny to her as she didn't t have any context so we just referred to it as the ghost when speaking with her. She goes on to tell us that she knew that man that lived there before Rob and his family moved in. He was a local at the bar she worked at and he had apparently died of brain cancer some time ago. When we asked her what his name was she said yeah. His name was Dennis but we all called him Denny. I felt like I had just been struck by lightning. Rob claims the activity had stopped completely since then. Had we given this spirit peace by acknowledging him befriending him? Did he finally go to the other side because we learned his backstory? How is it possible that he told us his name without ever actually telling us his name? I have so many questions. That is my ghost story. Told as well as I could remember it.